All right, so now we're going to go into 4.3. We're skipping 4.2 for a little bit. We'll come back. Um, so 4.3, we're going to talk about uh, the definitions of sine, cosine, tangent. Um, we'll start with that. So um, in order to define that in con the context of a, of a right triangle, first we need to know what a right triangle is. It's a triangle that has a right angle, a 90 degree angle. OK, so that's done. Um, then we need to define some angle. We could have chosen uh, this angle, but we didn't. We chose this angle. It doesn't matter. Um, then we define all the sides based on our choice of, of the angle, of the angle theta. Um, well, no matter what, whether we chose this angle or that angle, this would always be what's called the hypotenuse with an H. Hypotenuse. Uh, the longest side, the side across from the 90 degree angle. The other two sides though, um, one is right next to the angle itself. Okay, The hypotenuse is next to it, but it's a special side, it's the longest side, it's called the hypotenuse always. This one's right next to it, a word that means next to is adjacent. Uh, this one is across from it. Uh, if you're sitting some across from someone, uh, you say you're sitting opposite them. This is the opposite side. So, opposite. Okay. Um, and now I'm trying to secretly make sure I spelled opposite correctly. Um, yes, I did. So, opposite side across from the angle. Uh, adjacent side, next to the angle. If I chose this angle, let's actually do a little color coding here, dark blue. This would be this side would be opposite that blue angle, and this side would be adjacent to that dark blue angle. So you see how all that lines up. So uh, I'm just going to actually undo all that. Just you saw it, you get it. Let's use the light blue. Let's avoid any confusion. So trigonometry. Uh, let's say uh, most basically trig coming from triangle and uh, trigonometry that says trigonometry trigonometry uh, and then uh, like nometry kind of that part of the word meaning uh, the measurement right measurement of so measuring triangles um, so when we get measure triangles is to take the sides uh, and, and make ratios out of them and that's what all of these trig uh, functions values are right we have this thing called the sine. We, it's spelled S-I-N-E. We, we shorten it to uh, S-I-N um, of theta. The sine of this angle theta is its, uh, the ratio of its opposite side to its adjacent side. So we have, or sorry, not adjacent, opposite to the hypotenuse. Um, okay, And then the, uh, the cosine is the adjacent over the hypotenuse. And the tangent is the opposite over the adjacent. OK. Uh, so I'll just come in now and say uh, there's this little thing. Uh, it's, it's a mnemonic device. It's a way of helping us remember things. So here we have the sine is the opposite of the hypotenuse. Sine is the opposite over the hypotenuse. So right, it's the the trig value first, the the numerator and then the denominator of the ratio. Then we have the cosine is the adjacent over the hypotenuse, and then we have the tangent is the opposite over the adjacent. So if we say that real fast, it's Sokotoa. So that kind of helps us remember. You know, I know one of them is the opposite and the hypotenuse. Is that the tangent? Is it the cosine? Well, if we think about Sokotoa, we can say so, right? So, S O H. Uh, so that would be opposite over hypotenuse. And there you go, and so on. Um, those aren't all the ratios we can make. We can actually, uh, you know, these are three different combinations, but we can take each of these combinations and flip them over. Um, so if we were to flip this one over and do the hypotenuse over the opposite, this is what we would call the cosecant. Okay, and then if we were to take the hypotenuse over the adjacent, that 
that would be the, uh, the secant of the angle theta. And if we take the adjacent over the opposite, then we have what's called cotangent of that angle theta. So when you hear sine and cosine and tangent, don't get too freaked out because it's uh, just uh, a ratio of one of the sides of that triangle to the other side, so just some other side. Uh, it's one of the other two sides. Um, so there it is. Uh, all six possibilities are here, and each of these six unique possibilities has a special name. And that's all, uh, that's all it is. That's all trigonometry really is. Um, and then we just figure out all the different things we can do with those trig values. Um, so some trig values of some common angles, that's what we're going to look at next. Common angles being 30 and 60 and 90. Um, at least those angles that are in a right triangle. Um, and then we'll look at some trig identities and then applications will be more for the sample problem. So we're going to look at trig values of uh, some common angles. So if I draw real quickly um, I wanted to start with the 45. So real quick, I'll go like this and like this. Hopefully, I've drawn it so that you believe that these are the same. Let's make these both one. We'll make these 45 degree angles, and this, of course, a right angle. Okay. So first, we will need to solve for the hypotenuse. Well, we have the Pythagorean theorem. It says a squared plus b squared equals c squared. So one squared plus one squared equals uh, equals c squared, right? So 2 equals c squared, so the square root of 2 equals c, or the hypotenuse. So the square root of 2. Uh, very uh, interesting history of the square root of 2. You should look it up or just ask me in person sometime, and I will tell you all about it. Um, so what are the trig values of 45? And by the way, this would be 45 as well. So whether you pick this angle or this angle, it's all going to turn out to be the same. So what's the sine of 45? Well, it's the opposite over the hypotenuse, so Katoa, remember that. Uh, 1 over the square root of 2, OK? Interesting uh, history of why we don't leave it this way. We don't leave it as 1 over the square root of 2. Um, basically, uh, the guys who launched the space shuttle, uh, they didn't. Uh, they couldn't divide by this the square root of two because they used the thing called the slide rule, and the slide rule wasn't a calculator. It was an amazing tool, but it could not divide by square root of two. So what did they do? Well, they could divide a a square root by a number. So what the what what they did was they did something called rationalizing the denominator. This is irrational, the square root of two, but the square root of two times the square root of two is two. And 1 times the square root of 2 is the square root of 2. And the slide rules could do this. And to do this is the same as to do 1 over the square root of 2. So there you go. You rationalize the denominator. And the sine of 45 we call square root of 2 over 2. All right. Uh, well, how about the cosine of 45? It wouldn't take you but a couple seconds to see that we would take the adjacent over the hypotenuse. And we'd get 1 over square root of 2 again. And so again, square root of 2 over 2, that's the cosine. Uh, and how about the tangent? The tangent of 45. That's opposite over hypotenuse, or opposite over adjacent, excuse me, opposite over adjacent, that would just be 1. Uh, so then the cotangent, that would be uh, just the reciprocal of the tangent. So that's 1 over 1, that's 1. Uh, the uh, secant, that would be the reciprocal of the cosine, right? We just flip the cosine over and we get that. So. Uh, the cosine and the sine are both the same, so the cosecant and the secant are both going to be the same. So instead of flipping over two, flipping over root two over two, and then having to rationalize the denominator again and simplify, and we would uh, eventually get the square root of two. If we, if we flipped this over, we get the square root of two over one, and this would be the square root of two, and so would this. Okay, let's look at uh, another special uh, common triangle. Um, okay, it's going to be this triangle try and draw it so it looks the way you're used to, or that it looks realistic. This is uh, 30, uh, 60, 90. This is 60 degrees. This is 30 degrees. This is 90 degrees. Um, 
let's say this side is um, 1. So let's figure out uh, what the, the rest of these are. So I'm going to try and draw this real light. I'm going to mirror this triangle over here. That didn't work out very well. That's OK. OK, I'm going to, I've mirrored this triangle over here. Maybe I could uh, erase it, some parts of it, make it a dotted line. So I'm going to use this this mirror image over here to help us find the rest of these things here. So if this is 30, 60, 90, this is 30, this is 60, this is 90. If this is 30 and this is 30, this whole thing is 60. right? So this is a 60, 60, 60 triangle. If all three angles are the same, then all three sides have to be the same. So if this is 1, then this is 1. That's because it's a mirror image. And if this is 2, then this must be 2 because um, um, it's an equilateral triangle. This side is 2, this side is 2, this side is 2. What's this side? Well, we did Pythagorean theorem again. So 2 squared equals, let's say, a squared plus 1 squared. So and we'll subtract 1 from both sides. So we get 4, that's 4, minus 1, minus 1 equals a squared. So this is 3, that equals a squared. So the square root of 3 equals a, the square root of 3. So now we could just get rid of, uh, of, of hello, OK, of all this. We don't have to look at that anymore. And we can see the measurements of that triangle. Um, this is, uh, well, if we want the sine, of 60 degrees, that's going to be opposite over hypotenuse. That's going to be the square root of 3 over 2. The cosine of 60 degrees is going to be equal to uh, opposite or adjacent over hypotenuse, uh, 1 half. The tangent of 60 degrees is going to be equal to uh, the square root of 3 over 1, so the square root of 3. Uh, then the cosecant, the reciprocal of the sine would be 2 over root 3, and then we would rationalize the denominator, and we'd get 2 root 3 over 3. And then the secant of 60, the reciprocal of the cosine, is going to be the reciprocal of 1 half, which is 2. And the cotangent, the reciprocal of the tangent, is going to be 1 over root 3, or root 3 over 3. Okay, If we rationalize the denominator of 1 over root 3. Um, also, let me highlight this, kind of write over this in, uh, in red. And we'll see that, say for instance, the opposite side of 60 is the adjacent side to 30. So the what, what is the sine of 60 opposite over hypotenuse is the adjacent over hypotenuse for 30. So the sine of 60 is the cosine of 30. Okay, And when we say adjacent over hypotenuse for 60, that's opposite over hypotenuse for 30. So this is the sine. The sine of 30 degrees is the same as the cosine of 60 degrees. When we say opposite over adjacent, opposite over adjacent for 60, that's adjacent over opposite for 30, so this is the cotangent of 30 degrees. And here we have the reciprocals, so uh, what's the cosecant of 60 is the, uh, let's see, the, um, uh, what do we have, the, the reciprocal of the cosine, so this is the secant of 30. This would be the cosecant, the cosecant of 30 degrees. And this would be the tangent of 30 degrees. All right. Um, so it turns out that, you know, the that 30 and 60, they're part of the same triangle, so it would make sense that their opposite adjacent hypotenuse sides would, uh, would all be the same, just kind of uh, in a different order. So uh, we've investigated and we found then that the, the sine, for instance, of 60 is the same as the cosine of 30, and the cosine of 60 is the same as the sine of 30, and we've written down all these other relationships. So they have the exact same values. They're just 
uh, you know, they have different names because they're different angles. Um, so next we will look at uh, some trig identities. So the first uh, of those trigonometric identities would be uh, just the reciprocal identities, like the sine of an angle is equal to 1 over the cosecant of that angle. Um, the cosine would be equal to 1 over the secant. The tangent is 1 over the cotangent. And so obviously uh, the cosecant would be 1 over the sine. And the secant would be 1 over the cosine. And the cotangent would be 1 over the tangent. OK, so those are your reciprocal identities. Um, the tangent is also equal to the sine over the cosine. Um, that's another definition of the tangent. And so the co since the cotangent is the reciprocal of the tangent, and the tangent is sine over cosine, the reciprocal of sine over cosine is cosine over sine. And that's the cotangent. Right. Then you have your Pythagorean identities. Um, let's see. If you have a, um, well, if you had a triangle that was a right triangle and its hypotenuse was 1, then if you look at the uh, it, it, this is being the angle that we're talking about, and the, this is the opposite side and the adjacent side. Well, the opposite, opposite over the hypotenuse, the sine, would just be what the opposite side is. Opposite over one is just opposite, so that would be the sine of the angle. And likewise, the cosine would be uh, would be the adjacent side, and the adjacent over hypotenuse would be just cosine, right? The adjacent side would be the value of the cosine if the hypotenuse is one. Um, so you can see from this triangle, at least, that uh, if we use the Pythagorean uh, um, theorem, sine squared plus cosine squared would be 1 squared. So sine squared plus cosine squared is equal to 1. Um, and that will always be true. That's one of the Pythagorean identities. Um, now let's say you divide both sides by cosine squared. Okay, so you divide this by cosine squared, this by cosine squared, this by cosine squared. Um, then sine squared over uh, cosine squared is going to be the tangent squared. Cosine squared over cosine squared is going to be 1. And 1 over the cosine squared is going to be the secant squared. Um, do the same thing to this equation here. Divide everything by sine squared. So you'll get sine squared over sine squared is 1. Cosine squared over sine squared is the cotangent squared. And divide 1 by the sine squared, and you get the cosecant squared. Okay, So these three are the Pythagorean identities. These are the reciprocal identities. And these are what are called quotient identities. Okay, And uh, we'll use these identities. We'll use uh, all these facts to solve some triangles. And um, we'll do that and uh, not just solve triangles, but solve some like real world issues and, uh, and, and word problems and that kind of thing. Um, so we'll do that in the uh, next video. Thanks for watching.